Welcome back to the Introduction to Materials. As I mentioned at the end of the last video, in this video, we are going to create a pulsation effect that will change our glow. It's going to make our glow get brighter and dimmer over time. It's just going to make the animated effect even cooler. That's right. But before we do that, we never really did apply this material over in our level and see what it looked like. So let me slide our material editor out of the way, or at least mostly out of the way. And let's click the Apply button. And you'll notice everything kind of ooh, changes ooh, a bit. It looks really cool. Yeah. And let's also hit the real-time button and see this moving. Ooh, I like it. Yeah, that's starting to look really cool. Let's turn off real-time, and we'll slide our material editor back over. Now, our next... Let's go ahead and save that package real quick. Oh, okay. That's, sure. Well, let's go ahead and close this down. We'll open up our... This is uh, just to help browser. remind all of our viewers to save their packages frequently when they hit those points where they know they're happy with the assets they've created. Sure thing. There we go. So there we go. Now we're saved. Let's open the material editor back up, awesome. and we will proceed. Now, as I said, what I want is a pulsation in our glow. We want our glow to get brighter, and we want it to get dimmer. And how are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to drive it, the whole thing with a sine wave. And we have a sine material expression hiding in our list, which you can see here. Now, if you take a look at the sine expression node, it has an output, which is going to be our, uh, our actual wave. It'll be a value that fluctuates between uh, negative 1 and 1. It's going to keep going up and down, over and over. But you need something to drive this. You never actually say sign. It's always the sign of something. It's, a, it's an operation that you apply to something. And what we're going to ha actually take the sign of... And it needs to be something that's changing, too. Right. Something that ch Otherwise, it's not a wave. Yeah, it'd just be a one value. A single the sign value. of that value. And the only thing that is constantly going to change uh, throughout our game that we can guarantee is always going to change is time. So let's bring in a time node. And we could just take this and plug it right into our sign. And we will notice as soon as this catches that our sign immediately starts doing something. It's pulsating. We're getting a value that goes all the way up to 1 and then down to negative 1. And fortunately, that negative 1 just reads as black. Yeah, we're just super black. Yeah, we're just going between white and black. Now, you could perform mathematical operations to make this uh, go between 0 and 1. You could divide the result by half and add 0. 0.5 to it. <laughs> okay, come on. White and black, guys. White yeah, and black. But okay, um, so. yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. I just wanted to bring that up. If you needed to go between black and white more smoothly, because you'll notice right now it favors black. It stays black most of the time, and that's because we spend so much time underneath 0. That's right. Uh, if you take the whole thing, divide by 2, and add 0.5, you end up with a sine wave that goes between you, 0 and 1. Right, then you get nice and smooth. But I'm not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> what, I, what I would like is some part of this network to allow me to control time, because that's pretty fast. I mean, let's go ahead and just start getting things hooked up. What I'll do is I'll create a multiply node, and we'll make it kind of way over here. I mean, our network's getting ridiculously big, but that's okay. And I created a normalize again. Forgive me. The uh, M and N key on this keyboard have no letters left on them. They've been I have off. typed on that keyboard for so many years that most of the letters are gone. That's right. So uh, let me just plug our sign. And this is a cool thing. If you're zoomed too far in to see where you're going, you can just drag and find it. So there's one connection. You'll notice our connections are slowing down a little bit because our uh, material is having to think a little more. And we'll plug this multiply into, and there we go. So now you can see the whole thing pulsating. Now let's plug this into emissive and see what we get. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a real, like, I don't know, some sort of dark traffic light. And not the kind of thing that I really, um, I don't think it's particularly useful. Reminds it's like me of, something you'd find in a party store. Yeah, it reminds me of a turn signal or something. So we need some way that we can slow time down. And I don't really mean time as in game time. I mean the time that's being fed into this sign. We need to slow it down so that this uh, pulsation doesn't take place quite so quickly. Now to do that, what I'm going to do is bring in a multiply node. And we're going to multiply time by some factor. So let's bring in a constant so it's, uh, again, holding down the one key and uh, left-clicking. Uh, when I created the multiply, again, I held down M and left-click. You should be used to that by now. But uh, let's take this constant, and I'm going to name it time factor. And we'll connect time to input B. We'll take our time factor, and I'll position it over here a little bit, and we'll plug that into input A. Start to kind of line things up just a little bit better, so even that out. Let's move this over, and then we'll just plug our sign into the multiply. Now, currently, we have this set to a value of zero, so everything's going to immediately switch off. 
We need to take our time factor, and here's a value of 1, so here's where it was a second ago, so we're multiplying time by 1. Uh, now, if we, to, to, in order to slow this down, we need values less than 1, but still greater than 0, so let's try maybe, I don't know, um, 0.5. So we'll just slow it down by half. Okay, still not what I'm going for, but really what I would like is a pulsation that's very, very slow. Something that takes many seconds to go through a full cycle, but because we're still constructing this and I'm impatient, I'm going to leave it moving kind of fast while I determine how much we're going to be pulsating. Because I don't want this to go between hot and completely cold, which is black. Right, right. I want it to go from hot to not quite as hot. Now, how are we going to handle that? We've already got an, uh, a nice system set up to control where the glow is taking place. So what I want to do is set up another linear interpolation system. So let's move our network out of the way a little bit. I'm going to hold down the L key and left-click, and that will create another LERP. And I'll just go ahead and immediately plug our sign into the alpha for our LERP. And what are we going to be blending in between? Well, essentially, it's going to be in between two glow values, a high glow value and a low glow value. But this is where things kind of get interesting. We already have, if you remember, up here in our base glow system, a glow intensity value. It's already here and already in place. Well, we don't want it anymore. <laughs> so I'm going to bypass it by taking this multiply node and plugging that directly into the next node. So we've just, boom, nuked out our glow intensity. Let's take this multiply and this glow intensity that we have here, and we'll move these down. And we'll just kind of disconnect everything. I'm going to save that multiply because I have a, a feeling we might need it. We can always make another one. It doesn't really matter. But we have glow intensity. I'm going to rename this to max glow intensity. Because this is what we had originally. This is the, uh, the first glow intensity we were actually using and so that's as bright as we want it to be. Okay. So let's move this up a little bit. I'm going to hit Control-C, Control-V, and we'll move this down underneath. Now let me make sure everything lines up nicely so it's all nice and readable at this zoom factor. And we'll rename this to Min Glow Intensity. So this will be the minimum amount of glow we will allow because we don't want things to ever go to black. Now for now, let's just plug these up. So you go there. You go there. And we might not need this multiply after all. I can always make another one anyway. So we'll delete that. Let's take our linear interpolation, and I'll plug this into input B of our multiply. So right now, nothing's happening. And why is that? Because we are linear interpolating between 10 and 10, which shows no change. So let's take our min glow intensity, and let's just start off by setting it to zero. It's a, a nice value for us to uh, just begin with. We know we don't want it to go that low, but check this out. So it... Has, uh, inadvertently, we've given a much nicer blend in mm -hmm. between what's going on, so we're not really hanging down underneath black for so long. All, actually, what it is is we're staying uh, up toward white. We've kind of inverted what's going on with the sign because we have our max at the top in uh, input A and our min down here at the bottom in input right. B. So instead of going all the way down to zero, let's say we uh, go to half of our max glow intensity, which would be five. Ooh, getting a little nicer. Yeah, that looks a lot nicer. But let's say we take our max... I want to push our max up. Let's say our max becomes 15. So it gets pretty intense. And then we'll take our min... I don't know. I'm almost starting to feel like a surging liquid. Yeah. It's kind of coming up and starting to swallow up some of the rocks, then going back down. I'm going to get picky. We're going to put our, our max at 12.5. <laughs> and then we're going to take our min and put it at around 7 to 8. So it's not really something that you're going to see as much as you're going to feel. Yeah. And when the whole thing is done, it's even going to be even more of a felt rather than seen thing, because I'd like to take our time and really slow it down. In a best-case scenario, I'd like this to be something that was like 0.08, not even 0.1, so not even a tenth of a, uh, of a second. You're just going to really slowly see it start to shift. I think even here it's starting to darken a little bit. Very nice. So yeah, very, very subtle effect. Remember, sometimes subtlety is key. And if you come over here to the unlit side, it becomes a lot more apparent. The cool doing. side. Yeah, the cool <laughs> side. All right, so that takes care of that. Let's go ahead and grab this uh, new section we've created. We'll move it out of the way. We'll hit C. And let's call this the pulsation section. 
And really with that, I think we're done. What, uh, what we need to do from here let's is... Let's go ahead and get it applied. Yeah, let's get this applied, so we'll click the Apply button. And let's close the generic browser and show real time. And we can even, if we turn the intensity of that light yeah, down. really wanted to. Or, yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, we could just kill out that light. And then go into game mode. And you could just sit here and watch it. And I'm not going to probably just sit here. You know, it's already doing it. It's darkening up quite yeah. a bit. And as a, a player went through, it would get brighter and it would get darker. So that's everything I really wanted to show in this material. I mean, there, you could just continue adding uh, layers and layers of instructions and get all sorts of uh, new complex effects in, but I can't think of too many more directions to really push this. Yeah, to be honest, this was a very nice example of starting out with a very simple base material and building it up to a more and more complex material. Absolutely. When we started, remember, all we had was a diffuse channel and a normal map. We had the color, and we had a little bit of a three-dimensional effect to make the rocks uh, look like they were actually there and had some depth to them. Then we took that uh, normal and we pushed it to add some more detail to it. We uh, adjusted some specularity. We added some glow into those crevices, and at first it was just a single color. Then we tweaked that color so that it changed based on the angle the viewer was looking. Then we uh, perturbed that glow by adding in some textures that ripple underneath, and we multiplied out by those textures, and then we pulsated the whole thing based on a sine wave. So a lot of different things we've covered, and hopefully, if nothing else, going through these videos, and if you followed along, you should now be armed with everything you need to really get in and start experimenting with the material editor system on your own and really start to create some cool materials now that you know you're not going to break anything. Nah. And you can think of all sorts of cool things that you can plug into each one of these different channels and get some great effects. So that's going to wrap things up for this particular material. Thanks a lot.